Live from our Liberty Harbor Academy studios above Jacques Flower Shop, this is Dread at Large. Joining us now is State Representative John Burt of Goffstown. He was handily reelected in the last round of elections, something of an anomaly for Republicans in this state. And um, led the effort to try to save his right as a state legislator and citizen of New Hampshire to carry his legally obtained and totally legally licensed uh, permit and permitted uh, guns onto the House floor. Democrats wanting to protect the children in the state house said state reps could not take their guns into the ante room or onto the House floor, but can have them anywhere else. John. You know, normally I don't do stuff like this on Friday, but it's I just <laughs> all right. You know what? While you're introducing yourself to our listeners, okay. a little bit about yourself, who you are, what you do, all that fun stuff. I'm going to adjust your mic to make sure that they can actually hear you. So start. OK, sounds good. I appreciate you having me on, uh, Rich. Uh, I am Representative John Burt of Goffstown. And ho- hopefully this is going to come in good. Uh, One thing that I want to say that I find extremely funny and extremely sad in one aspect is how leftist our news media is. Have you heard any of them, any of them, and you won't? What happened two years ago? We allowed guns back on the House floor. And all they did for two years the Democrats, was cry. Oh, the first thing in business that they did was guns. Well, what is the first thing they did this time? Guns. Guns. Exactly. They removed our right to bear arms. And what scares me with this is if it starts there, then it's going to go to the rest areas because they've talked of that the last time they put the ban in. Um, all government buildings, all state buildings, and eventually down to the town hall, anywhere. All right. So let's let's talk about what happened two years ago. The Republican leadership came in for heavy criticism from the Democrats yes. because they repealed a ban on guns. Tell us what the repeal did, where it was effective, and what it allowed for. What changed when the Republicans took the legislature Uh, in 2010. All right. When I was elected in 2010, you were not allowed to bear arms to protect yourself in the state house, the legislative office building in adjacent buildings. Right. So no, you couldn't carry a gun. Even if you were a legally qualified gun owner with a properly secured concealed carry permit, or in New Hampshire, we're an open carry state, so you couldn't wear it on your hip. Exactly. You could not bring it into the state house at all. That's right. Now, why was that the case? Why did that? Why were guns banned from the state house? Because several people exercised their Second Amendment rights, and the Democrats did not like it. So, legislators, citizens, staffers, whoever, yes, were uh, before. So, the Democrats banned that when they took the legislature in two thousand six. Is that what you're well, saying? Well, it might have been after that. It was probably six, seven. You know, probably into seven before they finally got to it. Okay. So they enacted a ban under what pretense? Uh, that's what we want to know. They just they just made a rule. Okay. Under House rules. So when the Republicans took back the legislature in 2010, when they yes. were elected in the majority, they they decided that um, this was foolish, and they did what? They said any legally qualified citizen, legal gun owner, uh, legal concealed permit carry, per- anybody, state rep or citizen or, or average citizen alike, may carry guns into the state house. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but then they did say that they didn't want it open carried. Okay, uh, so which, they, re- they, they disallowed open carry, but yes. they allowed concealed carry, which is something under the law. Yes. Okay. So, and that's what my amendment here was going to key. All right. Before we get to your amendment, though, so now there was a vote in the Rules Committee, which we covered, and there was apparently a vote yesterday in the House. Yes. Um, well, it was Wednesday. Wednesday in the House to yeah. change that. What changed, John? 
Because I'm, I, I have to, to be, admit, I think I know what happened. I, I think what ended up happening was the only thing they did was prevent representatives from being able to take their own guns onto the house floor or into the ante room. But you can still carry it anywhere in the building. Uh, yes, <laughs> and you aren't hearing this in the news. They're saying that there's a ban on guns, and there isn't. Uh, President of the Senate, uh, President Bragnan, said it ain't going to happen over here. So senators can still bring their guns onto the Senate floor, but representatives may not bring their guns onto the House floor. Yes, and if there's a nut in in the House, I'm going to run next door to hopefully find Senator D'Alessandro to come and save us uh, uh, if he's packing. I don't know if he is. I'm sorry. uh, Say that again. Uh, What I'm going to do is if something goes down in the House, some nut comes in, I'm going to run to the Senate and see if they'll save us, and hopefully Delisandro will. <laughs> Delisandro. <laughs> I don't know if Luke can move that fast anymore. <laughs> well, we'll push him. <laughs> uh, okay, so now there's something called an ante room where the guns are also disallowed. Where Where is the ante room? What that, is that? Uh, basically, it's right under the gallery, and it's right behind the house, and that's where we kind of go out and we can visit without interrupting the house proceedings. Okay. So, um, what is the, what is the point of saying you can have guns anywhere? Cause what Mary Jane Waldner? Yes. She's the Democrat leader, right? Uh, uh, uh yeah, I think she is. Yes. Okay. So yeah. now she was quoted as saying that they needed to make these, uh, this change because school children often tour the, the, uh, the state house. How is depriving you as a state representative um, of the ability to bring your legally owned and licensed firearm onto the House floor going to protect school children? Uh, it's not going to protect them, and that's why I want to carry. Okay. I want to protect the children. We have uh, John Heichel, also a representative in Goffstown, on the line who'd like to chime in. Good morning, John. Good morning, Rich. How are you? And good morning, uh Representative John Burke. Hey, Representative Heichel. How are you doing? Doing great, thank you. Um, you know, this is such a constitutional issue, and John did a great, John Burke did a great job on the House floor defending his amendment and defending this uh, this Rule 63. All right, well, we're going to get to Rule 63 and the amendment right after your call, John. So what would you like to say about this? Well, Supreme Court ruling where rights secured by the Constitution are involved. There can be no rulemaking or legislation which would abrogate them. That was Miranda versus Arizona, page 491. It's clear. Supreme Court decided. Constitution is decided. Part 1, Article 2A of the New Hampshire Constitution. It's clear. No rules. Nobody can prevent you from carrying a weapon. Anywhere. So, um, are... are, are, are are, is there anybody in the state uh, House of Representatives that is either going to challenge this in court or defy the rule and dare them to enforce it to create an issue that could then be litigated in the court? I don't know. It might be. It, I've heard some people going to challenge it. Yes, that's possible. But even yesterday during the ceremony when Governor Hassan was inaugurated, there were muskets and guns and all kinds of weapons on the House floor just less than 24 hours after this rule was made by Speaker Norelli and her gang to uh, stop uh, deadly weapons on the House floor. Indeed. All right. So this seems to be a little uh, showtime politics instead of any kind of practical policy. It's absolutely ridiculous, and it's a much safer house when people are when people have the right good people, uh, safe people, people who are permitted to have uh, this, this lawful uh, uh, self-defense, means of self-defense. It's a, it's a very dangerous place when people are not uh, able to defend themselves. All right. Representative Heichel, thank you for calling in. Thank you for listening. Great. Thank you, Rich. Have a wonderful day. All right. So Representative John Burt uh, continues with us here in studio. John, what security measures, what security is in place at the State House? that would uh, protect you as a representative on the House floor should somebody uh, – is it possible for someone to get into the State House with a gun? Oh, absolutely it is. Now, are there, are there metal detectors at the doors or at the entryway to the, 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 the uh, citizens' gallery above the House? Is there any kind of 
security system where people have to walk through, get patted down, uh, either identified as being legal or not legal gun owners? What is there anything in place? Uh, zero in place. Is there any kind of uh, security patrol that, uh, it, you know, I know in the Board of Mayor and Alder meets in Manchester, there is oftentimes, if not always, an armed police officer there is security for the meetings. Do you have such a thing at the in the House of Representatives or in the Senate? Uh, rarely. Rarely. Yes. And what it is, is we have a great staff of security. They're unarmed. They cannot search us. Oh, so they can throw their bodies at an armed gunman, but they cannot return fire. Exactly. Oh, that's that's and excellent. We do have well, bodies are excellent bullet stoppers. Oh, well, don't you know that? Well, they are if they're in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that worked out good. That yes. worked out good in Connecticut. Yeah, that yeah. worked out real good in Connecticut. And, I'm and, sure. I'm sure they. I'm sure the principal was able to save at least one child by by throwing herself in front of a, a, yes. a firing gun. Yeah. Yeah, and, and that's what I want to prevent here. Mm-hmm. Because how do you stop the nuts from coming into gun-free zones? You can't. No. Um, I think we've proven it over and over again. So you have a good security staff there, but what you're saying is – now, uh, is there – you know, we talk about a cop at every corner. Is there a security staff member in every chamber and every hallway on every floor? I don't think people realize actually how big the state house is. It looks like a small building from the outside, but when you – it's very easy to get lost in that place. It is. It's huge. Yeah, and, and there is no staff on every corner. Uh, they do have cameras, but uh, when seconds oh, count, so we could take we could take pictures of you while you're getting shot. Oh yeah. So when seconds count, you know, the police are only minutes away. Well, yeah, they were only ten minutes away from shade. Was it ten minutes? That's actually one of the things that are coming out of Sandy Hook. Is why did it take the cops so long to get there? Was it tw- ten minutes? Twenty minutes? But even if it was ten. Yes. Oh, so time. great. You know, it, as I said to Police Chief Dave Mara in what I an interview you would like, I think you should listen to that if you didn't uh, after that. You know, we were talking about um, having teachers who will, you know, already carry outside of school, be allowed to carry in it and whatnot. Yeah. He didn't like the idea. And he talked about it. And I said, you know what, Chief, your police, I have no doubt will respond quickly and valiantly and bravely yes. in defense of yes. those children. I have no doubt about that. But what about the five to 10 minutes it takes you to get there? Yes. What do you do in that five to 10 minutes? That's a lot of, that's a big body count in the hallway because there's nobody inside who can defend. Well, we're and, working on, and to his credit, I think that point got him to start thinking a little differently. The look on his face and yeah. the pause before he answered was telling. Well, I'm working on legislation for next year to put in to allow teachers to carry a uh, trained uh, volunteer teachers. I've received yeah. many emails. I don't think you need this. to arm teachers, but geez, you know, I think of Manchester, you got 1,100 teachers there. If only 10% of them um, yeah. carry. Yeah, the nut's that, not going to go there. That's, a, that's 110 teachers in the schools that um, that cap- could be there in case. Yeah. All right, John Burt, we're going to get more on this because um, Representative Burt made some statements and offered some amendments during these proceedings that I think um, you need to know about. And um, damn near border on civil disobedience. Chamber, we have uh, Josh in Amherst who posted up a question on our Facebook page. So Josh in Amherst has a question for your representative. He said, obviously there's a problem in the state house for the Dems to be addressing this issue right away. Could you ask him, could I ask him to give a statistical breakdown of how many shootings there have been in the state house since 2010, specifically on the house floor that injured children? Zero. Oh. Yeah, I know. Probably some don't want to hear that. Well, that would explain the priority. Nobody shot, <laughs> nobody injured, including children since 2010. So, John, um, you put up, uh, I guess, would it be fair to say you were sort of the leader of the effort against this move? Well, there was uh, two groups that went forward, okay. and I was kind of beating my own drum and put my own amendment in. And then there was another group that put a couple other amendments okay. in, and they tried to table the bill and or the rule and and go that route it, and go that route. So um, now <clears throat> you wanted to amend the rule. What did you want to amend the rule? First of all, what was the rule, and what did you want the amendment to the rule to be? The rule was going to say no one was allowed to carry or have in possession a deadly weapon as defined by RSA 625 colon 11. Does that include baseball bats? Because that can be a deadly weapon. Well, if you read RSA 625 colon 11, it's really the intent. It, it doesn't list firearms. 
it lists a weapon, anything, a pen, anything that you have an intent to hurt somebody. Now, see, I couldn't walk into the state house because my deadly weapon is my mouth and it cannot be set aside. <laughs> That's right. So you're banned from the state house. Can we get a silencer for Rich's mouth? <laughs> John? It's called well, duct tape. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that the rule would be was to ban <clears throat> any deadly weapon. Your amendment? It says at the end, except for except any for. person with a legal state of New Hampshire pistol revolver license in accordance to chapter blah, blah, blah. All right. So you wanted to exempt by amendment any legally licensed firearm owner. Now, when you say license, because we don't actually register guns here. We license people for concealed carry purposes. Yes. So what you were saying is if you legally are qualified to carry an, a firearm and you've obtained a legal concealed carry permit, you would be exempt from the rule. Exactly. And your amendment uh, went up in smoke, down in flames, crashed and burned? Well, no, I, I, I got a fairly good vote. I mean, I did lose, but right. uh, it was one of the highest votes uh, out of all the amendments. So I, I was pretty impressed. Okay, so <laughs> the that, that vote went down, and it then did. the rule passed. Was it a straight party line vote? Did any uh, Republicans join with the gun grabbers, or did any Democrats uh, stand for the Second Amendment? No, some Democrats went with me. Okay. I was very happy with that. I, I can't remember their names. I got the roll call. Um, okay. But, uh, they're probably crazy Manchester Democrats. Oh, I imagine they're being spoken to right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, there were some Democrats who voted. Now, so then the rule came up, an amendment. No amendment succeeded, I trust. Uh, none did. None did. And well, except for one that they wanted. Oh, which was? Um, I don't have it in front of me. It was just to uh, redefine. I think the original amendment that they had to ban guns was the hallways also. Okay. And the Senate sent a letter over from what I understand and said, uh, we walk down these hallways. You have no jurisdiction here. So that's when they <laughs> <laughs> that's when they redefined just the cloakroom. Well, room and... it's nice to see Senator Bragdon find a backbone. <laughs> oh, yeah. He did very well that day. Good. Well, good Good to know that Peter is there on the Second Amendment. Okay. So we have, we, we have this odd scenario now where you can carry a gun anywhere in the State House except into the House anteroom or onto the House floor. Does it also apply to the House gallery? It does also apply Okay, there. but there's nothing to stop anybody from actually bringing a gun into the gallery because there's no – there's no metal detector. There's no security guard at the door. There's no nothing. No, no, and they're not allowed to search you. Now, you made some statements during the debate that <clears throat> um, have actually captured national attention. Yes. Uh, your your speech, if you'd like to recreate, if you'd like to re-say what you said the, in its entirety, we'd be happy to give you the time. I've seen it. It's not all that long. Um, or you can just take what you believe are the salient points, and we can talk about what got you national attention and what you're going to do about what you said. What would you like to do, John? You're going to share your speech with us? Yes. Okay. Uh, just a few points it is really what I did is I said that I want to allow anybody <laughs> with a legal license to protect the children, staff, and reps who wish not to carry if a crazy nut wishes to do us harm. Regardless of party, gender, race, or age of any person that may be in harm's way, I and many other reps are willing to do this. And what that means is I'm going to protect the Democrats. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I would probably use them as uh, uh, anyone who would vote to take away my gun. I would probably use them as a human shield. But <laughs> and but you know, but I think I mean you know, what you're I, I think some people are going to scoff at what you're saying here though. But what what people don't understand is that those of us who legally own and carry firearms understand. That it is a responsibility you yes. assume, a very grave responsibility you assume when you decide to carry and exercise that right in defense of yourself or others. That is not something lightly done. And frankly, you put yourself in a position of harm because once you unholster, you better be willing to shoot because you are going to be shot at. Uh, exactly. It's a huge responsibility and you can't take it lightly. And, and legal gun owners um, – understand that and people yes. who just think that guns are the architect of all evil don't get that but anyway continue yeah. well and then what really got me national attention because i'm out in san francisco in the newspaper san antonio they printed it uh they said representative burr uh and this is the quote if by chance this amendment which would allow you to carry does not pass in rule 63 which will ban guns uh takes place and we become a gun-free zone, I only have one thing to say. I will not be a victim in this house, and I want all the, citizen, all the crazies 
in this state to understand that. So help me God. And that's what I said on the House floor. So was this your way of saying you will not adhere to Rule 63 if it passes? I think that's the way they're going to take it. Mm -hmm. Is that the way you meant it? Absolutely. And so you will not be constrained by this rule you will carry if you see fit to carry. I absolutely because uh, my mission is to be safe it is to to protect the children the staff and the other reps that are misguided in that state house. See you're nicer than I am. I would do you know when I filled out my concealed carry permit here in Manchester there's a you know there's a thing why do you want to you know why do you want to conceal carry? Yep. Uh I, I just put very because the second amendment uh, grants me that right. What other reason do I need? Yeah, <laughs> it is true. So, and I'm a bit, I'm being a bit cavalier about it, but um, the reality of the situation is, I, I think like you, but you know, I I would do it just out of defiance for my New Hampshire and United States constitutional yeah. right to carry. And who is anybody else to tell me that I can only exercise that right in certain places because <laughs> they say so? That is not what a constitutional republic is about. Constitutional republic, we are not a democracy. See, in a democracy. This is why the founders did not want democracy. In a democracy, the majority can vote to determine what your rights are and are not, when and where you may or may not exercise them. Yes. In a constitutional republic where the constitutions of the state and the federal government are designed to guarantee your rights irrespective of whatever the majority opinion of the time is, then you have the right to do it anywhere and everywhere you see fit. As long as you are not infringing on the rights of somebody else. Exactly. Rich, you're a radical. I am. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, so, John, did the rule pass? It did pass. So the rule of the, 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 the rule of the New Hampshire House now is that if you are a state rep or a citizen, a state rep coming into your own gallery or anteroom or a citizen going into the visitor's gallery, the visitor's gallery you may not carry a firearm. That is the rule. That is the rule currently. There is no enforcement mechanism. Zero in the Constitution supersedes any rule. So what's Speaker Norelli going to do about your defiance? Is she going to send you to – is there is there like a – you know? A, a timeout room for you? Well, I I, I don't know. <laughs> is she gonna have is she gonna have the sergeant at arms call in the state police and remove you from the chamber? Uh, they can if I uh, bared my you know if I showed my arms. You planning on brandishing it to make a point? <laughs> no, I'm not. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and that's why I wanted my amendment. Even though, really, bottom line, my amendment was against the Constitution uh, because people have the right to open carry. So it really really bothered me to put this in. John, you know, there are a lot of people out there. And, and, you know, to Mary Jane Waldner, Democratic leader of the House, I would like to know exactly how this rule is protecting the school children yes. who tour the state house. Exactly. And, and I tell them that, and you know, what Rich. I, you know, if a Republican had said the exact opposite, if the Republican, if a Republican in wake of Sandy Hook had said, oh, well, to protect the children, we should allow people to carry guns. Oh, this is terrible. You're politicizing a tragedy. But Mary Jane Waldner comes out and says, oh, well, you know, school children come here. We want to make sure that the state house is at least as safe as their school. Where is the outcry on that? What kind of uh, local media attention outside of our adorable little radio show have you gotten on this? Uh, quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm surprised how much uh, media is being picked up. I know CBS out of uh, Boston picked it up. So Boston. So you've had news outlets around the country pick up what you've said and done here. How about locally, local papers, local TV, local radio? Uh, zero. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. M-U-R. I don't know if they're still on the air <laughs> uh, because the, I've heard I nothing from them. Oh, my. Yeah. No, they're they're too far up. You know, well, I won't say it. <laughs> so, John, where, 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 where for from here? I mean, why, why does this matter? Why did we just spend two segments on the Dry Large Radio Show talking about something that seems to be, a, you know, a tempest in its own little teapot? Why does this matter? Because if they take this away, what is next? It, it's, it's exactly like what Obama's going to do. He's going to take our assault rifles away. And you know why he's going to take the assault rifles away? Is because we need those assault rifles. 
and he knows it. Well, I'd still like to know what an assault rifle is, and the fact remains that the handguns, semi-automatic handguns, like the semi-automatic rifle that Nutt brought into the school in Sandy Hook, were more powerful than the gun he actually used. Exactly. Yeah. So, and, and those aren't assault rifles. No, but just but like... that's what they're banning, even right. though that's not what's being used at the movie theater and other places. Right. Well, you know, and I think it's important to note that whether it's Sandy Hook or the movie theater in Aurora, California, or other places where, you know, Virginia Tech, other places where we've seen these school shootings, it's important to note that whether it's a mall or a movie theater or a school, virtually all of the places that have been hit have been places where either through public policy or the decisions of the private sector ownership yeah. guns have been banned like the movie theater in aurora california yeah. uh, aurora colorado he could have gone to bigger movie theaters he could have gone to closer ones but he went to the one where there was a ban on carrying firearms yep well and i he, just went to the hooks at one and watched uh is it uh django is that i uh, you know it, it was an okay movie uh but those people are pretty safe sitting around me <laughs> <laughs> and you know what else they have in common as soon as the police show up they all off themselves have you noticed that when the guys with yes. the guns show up when you got a gun aimed back at you, yep. game over. Well, Representative John Burdick Goffstown, thank you for joining us here this morning on Gerard at well, Large. Well, thanks for having me on. Um, we'll keep on top of this, and please keep us informed of what's happening on the State House. You have an open microphone here any uh, any and always times. But that didn't make any sense, but you know what I meant. Yes, I do. <laughs> and if you thanks want your it. children to understand the actual con- constitutional and foundational underpinnings of our constitutional republic and our individual freedoms, then consider Liberty Harbor Academy. They give it to you from original sources, the unvarnished truth, good, bad, or ugly. They leave nothing out in their teachings of history and provide accurate context for all of the things that have happened and are happening. The question before the House is the amendment to House Rule 63. The chair recognizes Representative Burt for a motion. Thank you. Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I would like to offer Will the member please suspend? The House will be in order. It's a little tough to hear. You may proceed. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I would like to offer this floor amendment uh, to Rule 63. Representative Burt moves the adoption of the Burt floor amendment to House Rule 63. and is recognized to speak to his motion. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I ask you and the fine representatives to vote yes on this amendment, which will keep us safe and allow any citizen with a legal State of New Hampshire pistol revolver license to protect the children, staff, and reps who wish not to carry if a crazy nut wishes to do us harm. Regardless of party, gender, race, or age of any person that may be in harm's way, I and many other reps are willing to do this. I pray to God that this would never be needed. But if we become a gun-free zone, we are telling every nut in this state that we are sitting ducks and when seconds count, the police are only minutes away. We have a constitutional right to protect ourselves and I wish to do that. On December 5th, I sat in this house and Governor Lynch himself said some words and we all repeated them. I know the fine representative from Lynchfield said these words as his oath of office was the one I found online. Being before His Excellency the governor and the honorable council, state your name, of state your town, do solemnly swear that I will bear faith, true allegiance to the United States of America and to the state of New Hampshire and will support the Constitution thereof. So help me God. 
I state your name again, do solemnly and sincerely swear and affirm that I will faithfully and impartially discharge and perform all duties incumbent on me as a state representative according to the best of my ability, agreeably to the rules and regulations of the Constitution in the laws of the state of New Hampshire. So help me God. We all signed this oath or we would not be sitting in this fine House of Representatives. For 193 years, the representatives of this House have had the right to protect the children, the staff, and themselves from evil that come to us if we become a gun-free zone. And we would not follow our forefathers which went by the New Hampshire and U.S. Constitution. Please vote yes and press the green button on this amendment. It is the right thing to do. If, by chance, this amendment does not pass and Rule 63 takes place and we become a gun-free zone, I have one thing to say. I will not be a victim in this house and I want all the crazy nuts out there in this state to understand that. So help me God. Madam Speaker, I would like a roll call. Thank you. Um, Madam. Does the member yield to a question? The member yields to Representative Campbell. You may inquire. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, I thank the representative for yielding. When you talk about the Second Amendment to the U.S. Constitution, and, and the provision in the New Hampshire Constitution that, that allows uh, the, that'll, that, the right to bear arms. Uh, I, I assume you're, you're talking about limits on that and not allowing limits, but isn't this amendment as offered by saying it's only allowing people that have pistol permits, isn't that in itself a limitation on the, on the, on the uh, right to bear arms? Thank you, Representative, for that question. And the answer is yes, it is. Uh, I did not like the way it was you know, that I wrote this, but I felt that it was the only compromise that would keep the children, the staff, and myself, and the rest of us, uh, safe in this house uh, because two years ago we eliminated, which I opposed, uh, eliminated open carry. And what this would do is it would basically keep the same uh, rights for uh, legal carry and concealed permit individuals to uh, protect us on this House floor. The question before the House, uh, will the member yield to another question? The member yields, Representative Horgan, you may inquire. Th thank you, Madam Speaker, and thank you to the uh, representative from Goffstown. I have a question about, it says, except for any person with a legal state of pistol revolver license in accordance with chapter 159 of the RSAs as amended 1979 um, so I looked at chapter 159 and it has um, well some of the some of the sections of letters so I couldn't even count how many there are but there's a couple dozen sections to it and it's it's been amended a number of times since 1979 so you could maybe explain uh, why you wrote it that way instead of just uh, saying pursuant to whichever section it is that's the relevant section Thank you, Representative, for your question. And what I did is I took my permit out, which I do have a uh, concealed weapons permit, or firearms permit is the correct term. Um, I took it out and I just copied what their law was, you know, how they stated it on the top. That's where this came from. Will the member yield to another question? The member yields, Representative DeSimone, you may inquire. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Representative Burt, for taking my question. I was having a hard time figuring out what deadly weapons actually meant, so I referred to RSA 625.11, and Roman numeral 5 specifically states what the interpretation of that is, Nowhere does it discuss any kind of a gun. 
it doesn't specify anything other it specifically states firearm knife or other substance or thing which in the manner it is it is used intended to be used or threatened to be used is known to be capable of producing death or serious bodily harm now I understand that firearm is included in that are we to be handed a laundry list of what it is we can and cannot bring into this chamber is that what your interpretation of this is the interpretation of 64 RSA 60 uh, 624 colon 11 625 11 I don't have that in front of me I, I mean okay. bottom line if it doesn't state uh, a, a firearm uh, to be honest I'm a little nervous about your pen that you're holding my point exactly it does well, the member oh. does the member wish to have May a follow-up Man. Does the member yield? The member yields. It does say firearm, knife, or other substance or thing. This, if I said or threatened to stab you with this pen, this would be considered. So shouldn't that be added to this rule? If we're going to include guns? Yeah. Would the properly, uh, I would assume there are some people in here that would know how to use that pen, so I would say yes. Thank you. The chair recognizes Representative Tamborello for a parliamentary inquiry. Thank you, Madam Speaker. My parliamentary inquiry uh, is as follows. Are not members of the general court considered officers of the court and are not uh, that is not a parliamentary inquiry. A parliamentary inquiry is an inquiry about the parliamentary situation. The situation right now is that House Rule 63, an amendment to House Rule 63 is before us, and in particular, a floor amendment to that amendment. Very well. Um, if you... I would like an inquiry of the representative. Would the member yield to a question? The member yields, you may inquire. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Representative, for taking my question. In your opinion, sir, are not members of the general court also considered officers of the court and are not officers of the court allowed to carry within a court in New Hampshire? I would agree with that, yes. Thank you, sir. Well, the member yield to another question. The member yields to Representative Dumaine. You may inquire. Thank you, Madam Speaker and the representative for taking my question. Would you believe that there are two constitutional amendments um, in our Constitution, Part 1, Article 2A says, I can carry a gun anywhere. And another amendment that says, if you don't want to carry a gun, you don't have to. Thank you for that question, Representative, and I would agree with that. Will the member yield to another question? The member yields, Representative Schlockman, you may inquire. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and thank you for taking my question. Because of a previous question over there from my fine colleague, I looked up the reference in your bill 624 because she was referring to 625, and now I'm really confused because 624, that section 11, doesn't seem to be dealing with weapons at all. So this says, in possession of any weapon as defined in RSA 624 colon 11.5, and 624 colon 11 there is no 5 and it's talking about the effect of conflicting provisions so I'm wondering if you are a victim of a drafting typo um, or if in fact we should go back to the question on 625 that was posed earlier thank you thank you for the question uh, I do state in my amendment of uh, 624 uh, colon 11 uh, so there is a I guess it could be possible there is a uh, clerical error there, but I don't believe there is. Oh, there is? The question, yes, the question okay. before the House is on the Bert. 
Will the member yield to a question? The member yields, Representative Valancourt, you may inquire. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Just a clarifying question, because I think we got some misinformation in response to another question. Somebody asked if officers of the court could carry, uh, and you, I think you said yes, but are not lawyers officers of the court, and are not lawyers prohibited from carrying guns into a courtroom? So isn't the answer that officers of the court cannot all carry guns? Thank you for the question. Um, I don't know if they're uh, not allowed to carry a firearm because they go into a side entrance uh, which does not require a metal detector. And I understand uh, a few of my lawyer friends have carried. Will the member yield to another question? The member yields. Representative Copeland, you may inquire. Thank you, Madam Speaker. A representative with regards to RSA Section 625 with deadly weapons and your amendment regarding people with licenses being allowed to carry, could you possibly be referring to some type of vetting process that is done with licenses to carry, including mental defects that people fill out and are only granted that license under those provisions so that other people who are carrying other weapons or open carry aren't properly vetted through this process? I guess I don't quite understand. I'm, I apologize. To, in order to get a pistol license in this yes. state, you must declare certain things, including mental defect. The chief of police has to do a background check and answer that permit within 30 days of denying or granting. Yes. So a vetting process is done through this procedure, whereupon open carry or other sections of 625 that declare brass knuckles, daggers, knives, etc. There is no vetting process for that for the citizens of the state. Absolutely. Thank You're you. correct. Thank you. And, and it is 625. I apologize. Will the member yield to another question? The member yields. You may inquire. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you for taking my question. I was a, would you believe that I was a court security officer in the Gosstown District Court for approximately a year and a half after I retired from the Postal Service. Would you also believe that as far as I know, that in this state, uh, with the proper uh, identification, a lawyer, an attorney coming into the courtroom, showing proper identification as an attorney of record, can carry in that courtroom? Thank you, Representative, for that um, question, and I definitely would believe that, and I also believe that state representatives uh, also with the proper credential could carry into a courtroom. The question before the House is the Burt Floor Amendment on House Rule 63. The chair recognizes the member from Rochester, Representative Bruin. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I guess as long as we're on the discussion of dangerous things, we probably should spread the net a little wider. You all know that statistics can be problematic because you can twist them however you want, but this one's pretty overwhelming, so I think I got some leeway. The, uh, the number of physicians in the United States is about 700,000. The uh, accidental deaths caused by physicians per year are about 120,000. That comes to about 0 0.171 per physician. And with all due respect to the medical professionals in here, it's not, I'm not talking about that. The number of gun owners in the United States is about 80 million. And the number of accidental gun deaths that result from gun owners, legal gun owners, is about 1,500. So that's point zero 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 one eight eight. So what that means, according to the FBI, um, doctors are about 9,000 times more dangerous than gun owners. Are we thinking about banning doctors from the house? There are, uh, there are some statistics in here about lawyers, too. But they are so dramatic that I'm not going to bring them up for fear someone might become agitated and go seek medical attention. 
On the other hand, I think we could look around the world and throughout history and see what's happened with people like Pol Pot, Mao, Mussolini, Hitler, who were the prime advocates for disarming the citizens. And we should contrast them to guys like Thomas Jefferson and Patrick Henry. Patrick Henry said, are we at last brought to such humiliating and debasing degradation that we cannot be trusted with arms for our defense? That's Patrick Henry. Thomas Jefferson said, the strongest reason for the people to retain the right to keep and bear arms is as a last resort to protect themselves against tyranny in government. We've got a choice to make here. I would hope that we would choose to stand with the Founding Fathers and not with people like Hitler and Mussolini and the like. The question before the House is the Burt Floor Amendment on House Rule 63. Um, I would just note after the discussion that um, the existing House rule does refer to 625 colon 11. So any, any of the amendments are intended to be 625 colon 11. Uh, the chair recognizes the member from Stoddard, Representative Eaton. Thank you, Madam Speaker. We've gone a long way around in a circle for what is in essence a very simple amendment, which was to allow those with a, a pistol permit to be able to carry on the floor of the House. And we've covered every other issue but that, or it seems so. Um, first of all, it's a tad discriminatory towards most of the members. Second, having a permit to carry a weapon in no possible way describes aptitude to carry and use a weapon. Anyone in this chamber can go get a pistol permit. And I would suggest to you that depending on what town you're from and where you live, although you're not allowed to have one if you're a convicted felon or you have some mental defect, that you could probably get one anyway. I happen to know in town where I was a police chief, my, the person that followed along issued a permit to a felon because he did not know how to do the background check. You do not know if someone is mentally defective unless they have been adjudicated mentally defective and usually not usually, often times, we'll have things plea bargained out of seeking counseling. So that would not be in the record for having a license to carry a firearm. A license is a piece of paper that just says, yes, you can carry a weapon concealed and under no circumstance assures any town or this body that a proper background check has been done and absolutely no air ensures anyone in this body that the person carrying that weapon has a clue of which angle to point it at. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I welcome the question from my colleague and brother police officer from Keene. Uh, the member yields to the question. Representative Dumaine, you may inquire. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and thank you, sir. You were a police officer, too, so we're both even. I said brother, yes. <laughs> uh, my question is, um, let me, I, actually, it's a question to try to understand what you're saying. So what you're saying is that it's perfectly okay to throw a wide net over all law-abiding citizens in order to get the uh, criminal aspect or the... Uh, insane aspect covered. Actually, that's not what I was saying. What I was saying is the piece of paper that is issued to you is a piece of paper that says you can carry a weapon concealed. I'm not covering the wide issue of whether we're carrying weapons. That is to come. 
and that will be fun. Um, but the question is, does a piece of paper giving you concealed weapon permit enable you to be any more qualified or any better to carry a weapon than anyone else in this chamber? And the answer is no, because you know as well as I do that the criminal background check is not infallible, in fact, is very fallible. And two, there is absolutely no requirement when you get that piece of paper that you have any concept of how to use any weapon whatsoever. Will the member yield to a follow-up? The member yields. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you again, Representative. I know that you can handle one, and I know I can handle one. Uh, Done it together. Now, you may have some people in who think they can and can't, but my question is why throw a wide net over law-abiding citizens when the insane and the criminals carry concealed anyway because they can't get a pistol permit and they slither under the net. They're the threat. They come in here. Can you guarantee they'll be stopped before they shoot somebody? One, I can't guarantee they'll be stopped before they come in here and shoot someone. And two, I can't guarantee that they're not going to get a permit. In fact, there is as much likelihood that they will get a permit as not, unless they have a standing conviction for a felony or a standing conviction for some mental health issue, which is more rare than not. Will the member yield to another question? The or should I wait till after everything? Uh, Representative Baldessaro, you may inquire. Thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. Thank you for taking my question. I was going to stop with the questions until I speak. And my concern, the first thing that came to my mind was, so your answer to this here is disarm, disarm all the law-abiding citizens because they may have not had some type of training would they get their permit? That was not my, my statement whatsoever. Uh, I said that is part of one of the problems part of one of the problems. My, my position is having a permit to carry is not a sanction that states you are proficient in use. Follow up, Madam Speaker? Well, the member yield to a follow up. The member yields. And then I'm done. Uh, so is there, is there any historical data in the state of New Hampshire, since we're the safest state for many years, that shows that there's a flaw in the system with the permit, that people are getting hurt or injured, that there's an issue? I know that there is data that people have gotten permits who should not have gotten permits. And can I present that data to you today? Absolutely not. Uh, but there is data that people who should not have gotten permits, in fact, did. And I can take you to 13 states that do not require a permitting process at all, including our neighbor, Vermont, that have no requirements for a permit. Thank you, Representative. I meant to say besides the police the officer. Question, the question the before the House is the Burt Floor Amendment to House Rule 63. This will be a division vote. Will members please take their seats? This will be a division vote. Representative Burt requests a roll call. Is that sufficiently seconded? It is sufficiently seconded. This will be a roll call vote. Will members please take their seats? <laughs> the question before the House is the Burt Floor Amendment to House Rule 63. This is a roll call vote. If you're in favor, you'll press the green button. If you're opposed, you'll press the red button. The chair recognizes Representative Burt for a parliamentary inquiry. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, if I know that this amendment would keep the children that visit this state, fine state house, the staff, and all of us fine representatives safe from evil that would come to us if this amendment fails. 
And for 193 years, we have kept our children safe and our staff and fine representatives safe 100% of the time. And voting yes is the right thing to do for those reasons. Would I now push the green button? Thank you, Madam Speaker. The question before the House is the Burt Floor Amendment to House Rule 63. If you're in favor, you'll press the green button. If you're opposed, you'll press the red button. The Chair recognizes Representative Shirtliff for a parliamentary inquiry. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, if I know that the amendment sponsored by the gentleman from Goffstown is contrary to the recommendation of the Rules Committee, and if I know further, Madam Speaker, that as the gentleman from Stott had pointed out, the fact that an individual who is given a gun permit only means they can carry a concealed weapon and not that they're qualified to use that weapon, would I vote now by pressing the red button to, pre to vote no? Thank you, Madam Speaker. The question before the House is the Burt Floor Amendment to House Rule 63. This is a roll call vote. If you're in favor, you'll press the green button. If you're opposed, you'll press the red button. Voting stations are open for 30 seconds. The House will be attentive to the state of the vote. 156 having voted in the affirmative, 209 in the negative. The Floor Amendment.